Well, looks like we're going full Renegade on this one. Welcome to the full Dark Path. And since we have to do the full Dark Path, that means we have to do Cryptic Castle's full Dark Mission, which means time to light the lanterns! Here. So, I decided to keep this one in because pretty much I didn't show off two of the lanterns. I was contemplating on whether to speed it up or not, but then that would make this episode about 10 minutes, so, uh, no. So, just as always, we're just going through the mansion, making sure we end up going to all of the lanterns to light them for Dr. Eggman. And you might be thinking, oh, hey, well, now that this is the full dark path, we're going to have a different boss. I mean, we're helping out Dr. Eggman, right? No. You still fight the egg breaker no matter what. And you might be thinking, oh, well, is there a different cutscene? No. In fact, it's the exact same cutscene. I don't know why it's the exact same cutscene, because in that cutscene, he ends up asking, Oh, Shadow, why are you here? Uh, never mind the fact that, you know, I clearly was talking to you throughout the level as I was lighting your defense systems, or in this case, just getting to the goal ring to try and find you. <sighs> Honestly, this game is very inconsistent with the plot to the point to where I don't even care anymore. Which is rather sad, because a game should not make me do that. A game should not. Either way, though... As always, since we're on a different path, we're going to have to ride our demonic falcon, as I am now calling this thing. And the thing about this is you can't take your melee weapons on this with you because reasons. You know, it's, it's never accurately explained as to why you're not allowed to take your melee weapons with you for this when you can clearly hold a gun still. You just can't have your melee weapons, which have ammunition, which is still stupid. Why does a melee weapon have ammunition? It's so dumb. What's wrong, Shadow? Does my castle scare you? No, it just brings back bad memories of Hang Castle from Sonic Heroes when I was Team Chaotix. That's something I should not be reminded of, Eggman. Ever. By the way, jump off of it right there. Uh, and then that thing implodes. Go, Demonic Falcon. So pretty much, same as always, the level is pretty much exactly the same. It doesn't really differentiate at all until you get to the end. But again, the whole reason why I'm keeping this in is in case some of you might not have seen the last episode and are just doing this for, say, you know, looking for all of the lanterns. Right, and kill that. Now, one annoying thing about the fact that you end up killing the black arms for this is, oh, hey, the black arms are so cool, they'll give you chaos powers. Unfortunately, it gives you chaos control, which takes you to the goal ring. It's not what we need to do in this mission. I kind of wish that chaos control would be specific for each mission to where it would change up what it would do and where it would take you instead of one definitive location. Uh, but that's just me hoping for more well-designed aspects in this game. That's asking for a lot. Believe me. This is known as the game that started the Sonic Dark Ages. Either way, one thing I could explain about right now is that little gas that I ended up picking up that filled up my dark chaos meter. Now, I've been meaning to talk about those for a while, and the thing, the reason why I haven't is they're extremely rare. What those do is pretty much they fill up your dark chaos meter, and you're first told about this if you go to Glyphic Canyon. No, not... No, they do appear in Glyphic Canyon. You're actually not first told about this unless you do Sky Troops, which is the neutral pathway, and you help out Dr. Eggman, and Dr. Eggman will explain, hey, that gas will fill up your dark chaos powers. Oh, thanks, Eggman. Uh, too bad this will never appear outside of Cryptic Castle and outside of, you know, Glyphic Canyon and Sky Troops. In fact, now that I think about it, Cryptic Castle is the most unique stage in this entire game because there is no complement level to this one. Let me think for a moment before I put that foot in my mouth uh, because I, I love tasting shoe. Let me think. No, I can't think of another stage that reuses assets like it does in Cryptic Castle. Huh. Cryptic Castle is the most unique stage in this game. That's sad. That's very sad, now that I think about it. Either way, come up over this way, and now we're gonna go through the psychedelic path. Somehow spinning this melee weapon with us, and somehow it's not glitching out. Don't question it. That platform in the middle of the room is one of the giant lanterns. Just don't look down. Yes, yes. Why? 
There is literally a solid floor here. There is nothing scary about this room. Why is it that I can't look down? Either way, though, this is where the path differentiates, and you have to go to the left in order to access the last lantern. If you go forward, you end up hitting the goal ring, and if you go to the right, you will end up finding Cheese Chow. Never mind the fact that we have not found Cream, so she will forever be lost inside this castle. Maybe that's why she ends up disappearing after this game. Because, in all honesty, I think... No, because Rush came out the same... Rush came out the same year as Shadow the Hedgehog. And she was in Rush. Then again, she's also in this game briefly for that one instance. But is she in Rush Adventure? I don't think she is. Because for the longest time, I think pretty much we won't be seeing Cream inside of a main Sonic game until Sonic Generations, actually. And I'm, I'm not counting the DS games because I know she's inside of DS Colors, but then so is Blaze and Silver, who have not really appeared in a main Sonic game until Sonic Generations as well. Either way, here is the last lantern that is inside of Cryptic Castle, so let's say we end up lighting it after I grab some more ammunition. And there we go. Now I cremate myself because Shadow wants out of this game like I do. I'm one step closer to getting the truth from the Doctor. I will not let him interfere with my plans. Yes! And just so you know, I have cut out the Egg Breaker boss fight because I showed it in the last episode, and pretty much you had to see the last episode when doing the junction to this one. And if you are just looking at this episode in particular, go to the last episode, you'll see the Egg Breaker. Or if you want to see it in another... Other areas go to any other path in this game. You have to fight the egg Mr. breaker four President, times. There's an emergency. What now? It seems as if our ground forces have been able to contain the black arm. But apparently enemy reinforcements have arrived and Central City is being invaded. How? How can this be? Well, I hate to tell you this, Mr. President, but your gun commander sucks. And also the fact that, you know. The city wasn't really that guarded. But welcome to stage four, Central City. Let me prepare my ranting throat for after this cutscene. Shadow, let me share with you a piece of your past. It's filled with nothing but hatred and contempt for the humans. Hatred and contempt for the humans? You were the ultimate life form, but the humans feared you and wanted to destroy you, and they did. Now, you must amass revenge on those humans, unleash your anger, and ultimate powers on them. Seems like Shadow gives in to peer pressure. Something's telling me if they could have gotten away with it, they probably would have made Shadow smoke. Either way, welcome to Central City. An abhorrent level if this is your first time playing. Luckily for everyone who is watching this, I know what I'm doing. And I know where the locations of the bombs we have to set off are. However, if this is your first playthrough, you don't know the location of these bombs. You don't know the location of them at all. As a result, you're going around the maze of a city trying to find them with no radar and no map system at all, with corridors looking exactly the fucking same. That is not good design, especially for a maze level like Central City. Your first playthrough for Central City is going to be atrocious because of this, unless you look up an online video of where exactly to find these bombs. Furthermore, you can't spend too much time looking around because, as you can see, we have a time limit before pretty much the bombs become inactive. And as a result, if you take too long, you fail the mission. Same goes for the hero mission on this one. You have a certain time limit before the bombs end up going off because for the hero mission, you have to go after the tiny bombs with a vacuum gun, which has the ever so fun chances of not working because sometimes the bombs will still go off despite you sending them in. 
This is one of the missions that does not have a neutral mission on it. It is only Hero and Dark. And with the time limit and the fact this is a maze, without the fact that you have any radar system, makes it abhorrently bad. This is not good design, and I don't understand it. Screenshots for early previews of this game showed this game had a radar system. It had a map. Why did somebody at Sega think, oh, you know what? I don't think that gamers want maps. I think maps are stupid. Why don't we have them fumble around in the dark like idiots? Until then. I hope that man was fired from Sega. Just like I hope the person who was fired from Sega was the person who designed this stage. Because guess what? That little area right there was a destructible wall. You have no idea that that is a destructible wall because it looks like just like the rest of the city. In the other stages in this game that are mazes, that have areas that look exactly the same as other ones, you do have an indication of a destructible wall. In Central City, you don't. Why is that? Who designed it like this? Who decided to take out the radar system? Uh, either way, we're just about done with the stage since I know what I'm doing for this. And honestly, if I didn't, you'd be seeing me fumbling around for probably another three minutes trying to find this last bomb because who knows, I might not have known that wall was destructible in the first place and I might have gone right past it. So either way, shoot from afar and there you go. You destroyed Central City. Something's telling me that president's not getting re-elected. At last, revenge. Yeah, yeah, Shadow. Revenge. And an A. If only because I knew what I was doing and you wouldn't know that on your first playthrough. Can't stress that enough. Meanwhile, in space! Why do we always end up in space in a Sonic the Hedgehog game? So, you finally come to realize just how abominable these humans are. Not really, I'm just going based on everything you've told me. And again, this just means Shadow Caves into peer pressure really easily. Space Colony Arc is the most powerful weapon to pierce stars, the Eclipse can. Piercing the stars. That's right. <laughs> oh my god, maybe Shadow is on drugs. That line delivery sounded like he was just high. Piercing the stars. Oh god, maybe Black Doom actually did offer him drugs. Seeing as how much of a peer pressure addict that Shadow is, he probably just ended up going and taking the drugs. Themselves from terror. Instead, it will be used to destroy mankind. Well, I mean, the Eclipse Cannon kind of is firing downward. And. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be used to protect instead of, you know, just ultimately destroy everything. But, welcome to the Ark! Why Black Doom didn't just teleport us into the Ark instead of, you know, probably what was thousands of miles away, I will never know. So, the Ark is an interesting mission. Pretty much for it, we have to destroy four of the Ark's defense systems on our Demonic Falcon, which has now the ability to fire missiles. The thing is, though, you have to do the Dark mission because there is only a Dark and a Neutral mission. And if you end up doing the Neutral mission, you end up on the Semi-Dark Path. There is another adjacent level to this that is for the hero path that has the same sort of requirements and is actually what I consider to be the worst level in the game. If you're watching the full hero path, chances are you know what level I'm talking about and have already seen that rant. That being said, what do I think of the arc? It's not too bad, but one thing I really don't like is with our Demonic Falcon, it doesn't do trips around the arc. No, it's only a one-way path. And if you end up screwing up, you have to take the checkpoint system and go to a previous checkpoint in order to be able to hit the defense system. Well, there are other checkpoints. As you can see down there, you can jump off this bird, demonic bird, at any time and hit a checkpoint and get right in front of the defense system. 
In fact, I sort of recommend that and then going, jumping off at each area that would have a defense unit on it and then using your actual guns to destroy the defense unit because there are actually boxes of guns right below, right next to the checkpoint system. The reason for that is the guns actually do more damage than this flying demonic falcon with its lock-on missiles. I don't get why that is the case, but it just does. It does more damage and it'll technically save you a little bit more time. That being said, you can hold the A button to move faster, something I haven't really explained too much about. And the reason why I'm not holding on to it more is I have a very bad time with glitches inside this stage in particular, and where I stop holding the A button, but for some odd reason, Shadow will keep on speeding forward as if I was still holding down the A button, causing me to miss the Ark's defense system, which is annoying. But after you go on to each checkpoint, there will always be a demonic falcon waiting for you that you can just ride on again to the next one. So just lather, rinse, repeat to all four of them, and boom, you end up making the arc defenseless. Which is kind of odd, because in another stage that is adjacent to this one on the semi-hero path space gadget, there's five of these defense units. Why is there only four for this mission? Not that I'm complaining that there's less, but how come this game is so inconsistent that I can't seem to get rid of it? Is it, you know, oh, Black Doom ended up destroying one of them? How do we know that? We, for all we know, this is the first time that Black Doom is at the Ark. Makes no sense. All right, so the Ark's turrets, just ignore those. You don't need to worry about them unless you get off and are trying to shoot one of the targets manually. What do I mean by that? If you are trying to shoot one of the targets manually, I recommend making sure that you take out the Ark's defense systems with a demonic falcon because otherwise those things have lock-on missiles and they hurt. And they constantly barrage you, which is annoying. So, just keep going forward. We're right next to our second defense unit already. So, what we're going to do is we're going to jump off. And now we are going to just fire our guns at it. As you can see, it just does more damage than the demonic falcon. I don't get why. I'm shooting what is probably energy missiles, and apparently bullets are stronger than energy missiles. Clearly, Eggman's been doing it wrong for years. That giant missile that he was launching at Station and Square wouldn't have destroyed Station and Square. It would have just slightly damaged it. What he should have done is just fired bullets. Either way, now we're heading off to the third unit, which is actually very close to the second one. It is very easy to miss if you are just speeding through the level by holding the A button. So, go down over this way. And, watch this, I'm gonna take the spring with the Demonic Falcon somehow. I didn't even know that was possible. And here we have the Arc's defense units, an artificial chaos, and a gun troop. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and grab that. And here's me trying to take out the Arc's defense units with this Gatling gun. But unfortunately, I'm too high of a plane to be able to automatically lock onto them. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go downward, and we're going to have to fire this manually. So take those out first, and luckily I'm flying slow enough to where I can just destroy this arc defense unit without actually having to get down. And so now there is only one left, so let us just rush through the rest of this and get to the end so then we're done with this dark mission. I honestly find doing the full dark path is a lot faster than doing the full hero path. And that is only because the full hero path's equivalent level on this one in particular is bullshit. But here is the last of the defense units. If you miss this one, then the goal ring is right after this, as well as the checkpoint, and you're going to have to hit the checkpoint and go backwards. But there we go. Defenseless. Somehow the arc is defenseless now. Never mind the fact that uh, the turrets are still active. Uh, I guess those crystals were powering it? I don't know. It's never explained. But we're done here. Headquarters! Arc to headquarters! Come in! Come in! Shadow's penetrated the Ark! He's headed toward the control room of the Eclipse Cannon! Come in, Eclipse Cannon! He must be stopped at all costs! Take him out! That's an order! 10-4! Copy that! 
And so we have our next boss, Blue Falcon. Okay, you can't tell me Sega is not purposely making goddamn F-Zero references at this point. I mean, Black Bull, Blue Falcon, come on. They want to make another F-Zero game. God damn it, Nintendo let them. So, the Blue Falcon, what do I think about it? It's honestly not that hard of a boss. It'll end up destroying that little platform in the center, but there's a spring that will send you up here. And the thing is, this is just like how the other equivalent of the Blue Falcon is, known as Heavy Dog. Just constantly homing attack, and you will beat this thing. Over time, it will end up losing its rocket launchers right there, and it will give you the option, if it lands on to, say, a solid surface, it will give you the option to use that as a weapon. It's a lock-on rocket launcher. Very helpful. And, yeah, that's it. I mean, look, I, this thing's already halfway dead. Yeah, requesting assistance. Yeah, you're not going to get that assistance, buddy. That's the other thing. It has the particle beam cannon, which is very useless. What it pretty much does is it's an area of effect, but if you're doing the homing attack, like how I am actually doing, then you're more than likely never going to get hit by it. Because once it, he stops, you could pretty much just continue going on. And, dang, I fell down. So, uh, let's go around here and hit that. Keep going up. And let's end this, shall we? One thing I do like about the Blue Falcon, as well as the Heavy Dog fight that's in the semi-dark path, is the fact that they actually have renditions of the Big Dog theme from you know, Sonic Adventure 2, which is pretty cool. Uh, personally, between the two, I actually like uh, Blue Falcon's rendition more than Heavy Dog's. Yeah, because they're actually two different tracks, believe it or not. Of all things, they're two different tracks. But, time to end this, because you cannot stop me, you cannot stop me, you cannot stop me, and good night. The planet-piercing eclipse cannon. There's no escape for you now. Yep. So, anyway, guys, I'm going to end it off right here. This is Roxas 1359 See you guys for more full dark fun in the next episode.